unforgettable. Hi, Dad. Happy birthday. We all got together to do nice messages and memories for you. And thanks to the skills of your, I think, 20th grandchild, she's put it all together. So please enjoy your day and this memory. So my memories of dad as a child, I think the highlight is the dinner table. All of us around the table, mom, dad, Nana, sometimes they were with the dish crew um, in the kitchen, but being there together. And I certainly remember dad sitting there talking about how this was such an important time of his life to be able to have all his kids together. But even the table and setting the table, doing the dishes was all about teamwork for him. You know, we would have somebody putting, you know, setting the table up and putting the tablecloth on, somebody else doing silverware. It was always about teamwork for dad. Many years later, we're back living in Pittsfield and I am having to make a pretty big decision about whether I would run for office for the first time. And of course, I went to Dad and Carolyn, you know, to talk it out with them. You know, at the time there was, well, I guess still there is um, some local politics going on that can get um, somewhat unfriendly, if I might say. And when it came down to it, Dad said pretty clearly, you know, I, I don't want you to run. Um, so of course I took his advice very seriously, trying to, to you know, think this out. And um, I went back to him a few weeks later and said, you know, I've made it my decision, I'm going to run for office. And I know this isn't what you wanted for me, but I hope you'll support me. And I didn't get those words out of my mouth before dad said, 100% I will support you. I'm, we are completely with you. And, you know, both dad and Carolyn were completely with me on my run for city council. And uh, you know, a few years later, my run for state rep, there were no two harder workers. I felt supported then. One of the great joys of winning those races was the enthusiasm, the pride, the love that I felt from my dad when I was able to, to meet that goal. As a parent now, I can understand how he felt to see the pride that I have in my kids. But boy, there's no better satisfaction than bringing that kind of pride to your dad. So happy birthday, dad. Here's to many more. 90th birthday, granddad. I have a story that I'd like to share, my memory of you. Shortly after Trisha and I were married, I had to borrow something. I forget what it was, a screwdriver or a tamper or who knows what. You were happy to loan it to me, uh, except I had to leave my watch behind. And um, I don't think I had done anything to deserve that, but there might be some other people in the family that held on to things a little bit longer. And I thought, hmm, this is odd, but I guess this might be a good way to get your tools back. So I did. I happily returned to your whatever it was, and I got my watch back. And uh, I do remember that. But the other real memory, that's just a teaser, the other real memory, I remember when I first joined up with the Farleys and met people in town that, uh, that knew you. And I was amazed at how nobody had anything negative to say about you. It was that you were universally loved by all of the people who you had come in contact with through the years. And, and that has stuck with me and, and it's well deserved. So I wish you a very happy birthday. Hopefully we will continue to have you guys over for dinner. It's really enjoyable to spend time with you. Thanks. When I think of your dad, I think of all the stories about Chicky and Toddy. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It brings a smile on my face every time I think of those stories. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Granddad. So one of my greatest memories with Granddad was when I was like 13 or 14 years old and Enrique and I helped him redo the back deck. And Granddad taught me how to use the pow like power tools and how you have to measure twice and cut once because if you mess up the first time, you can't really redo it. One of my favorite things to do with Garnett is that he comes over every Sunday night for dinner for the past few years, and that's been a really great way to see him more and be able to um, talk to him over dinner just kind of casually without the big crowd of the whole family. So that's been really, really nice. Happy birthday, Granddad. Happy birthday, Granddad. Well, I guess I have to believe my kids. I am ancient. I tried to do this by myself, and it wouldn't work, so... Colin had to come over and rescue me again. I guess I'm just technically incapable. Many of us remember Dad saying, lead by example. I would say that is why he was a just fit for his chosen occupation, education. Whether it was jogging up the street to prime his muscles for a softball game or to teaching me about the game of baseball, 
a quick remembrance of my first ball diamond. The backstop consisted of a six-row garage. Left center field had a green monster, the one you shingled. There was always a problem if you hit the ball to right field. The ball would become entangled in the clothes drying on a line that went from a hatch window to the telephone pole we used as first base. And of course, if you hit the ball in the garden, everybody, it's an out. Dad consistently let us figure out the answer. We rarely could ask him the answer or could say, can you just give us the answer? He would respond with something like, what do you have and where do you want to go? Then there would be a series of questions that led us to the right answer. When I questioned him as I grew older, he asked, had I given you the answer, what would you have learned? Mom and Dad had the joy of 12 pregnancies. Both miscarriages had devastating effects on both. The first I only know because of conversation with relatives, as this was to be the second child. The other I clearly remember as this would have been the twelfth. Dad sat in Mom's chair all Saturday afternoon and stared at a wall. I approached him a couple of times as to why he wouldn't move, yet still with his grief he chose to teach. He said Mom had a miscarriage and the doctors are removing Mom's uterus. God has decided that Mom has done enough. I don't remember much more of the conversation, but we did explore what was enough. Looking to the present, Dad is still employing the same formula with his grandchildren, whether it is with baseball, building a hockey rink, or helping with homework. It'll always start with, what do you have and what are you trying to do? Showing us how to find their way is one of the greatest gifts that has been given to us. Dad certainly has been an example. Happy birthday, Dad. Hi, Dad. This is Mother from Michigan. I have two really special memories. One is I always remember going Christmas shopping with you on North Street and that the rules were it had to be on the list and it had to be on sale. And I always remember how you tried to skedaddle to put yourself between me and the street and walk on the outside edge. And I always felt special and protected and, you know, just the special respect that you showed. So I have great memories of that. And the other was when Tom and I first brought Ryan to Pittsfield for the first time, back when he was new, he was six weeks old. And we had done Christmas with the family, and then we stopped to see Grandma Margaret, and we brought Ryan with us. And I remember Tom put Ryan in her arms, and she was singing and cooing to him. You know, she knew what to do. And all of a sudden, there was a shadow that fell across the doorway, and that was you. And you took off your hat and spent some time with us. It was just a really special, sacred moment, and I will never forget it. I carry the respect and the love and the care that you have um, into my professional life and into raising our family. And I love you, and happy birthday, Granddad. Hi, Granddad. It's Ryan. I have two memories for your upcoming birthday. One is when you rocked children. I was sitting on your couch in the family room, in the sunroom, and you were singing There Were Ten Pretty Girls in a Village School and rocking the children to sleep. My other memory is a long time ago, we went to a water park. We went to Michigan Adventures and you took a photo when the group was on the boat ride coming down the waterfall and granddad you got drenched happy birthday granddad hi granddad happy birthday my favorite memory of you is actually when i did my driver's ed test and i called you all the way from michigan to ask driver's ed questions um, I found out that Massachusetts does not have many four-way stops, and you guys are very safe drivers. You don't run the red lights. And I just remember laughing out loud with you and having a good time. Um, thank you for all the support you've given me throughout the years with me moving very far away and just the constant support. I thank you very much. Love you very much, and have a very happy birthday. Sending you warm wishes and fun 
from Hawaii. When I was five years old, I remember you bought this beautiful Monet print for my parents and they ended up hanging it above our couch. And I remember looking at it that day and turning around and looking at you and saying, I painted this. And you looked at me with such surprise and disbelief and you said, well, really, how long did that take you? And my response was, oh, just an hour. And so I remember that to this day. And I think it's a little bit ironic that I became an artist, but that's how much effect it had on me, apparently. Happy birthday, Granddad. It's one of my favorite memories. Hey, Granddad. I chose this memory that stayed with me throughout my many years. It was the memory of when Ryan, Nick, and I painted your house. This happened about, oh, 12 years ago. I remember this memory because of the life lesson that you taught me. You always tell us to do something to the best of your ability and to ask for help if you need it. Before we painted your house, we had to scrape off the old paint, screw in the loose boards, and apply a fresh coat of paint. While Nick and Ryan were scraping off the paint, you and I went around the house, screwing in the loose boards. During this process, you always said, take your time. If we take our time, then we won't have to do it again. Each part of our lives needs full amount of our attention so that we do it right, give it the right amount of love. If we do this, then we will not have to do it again, and it will be done to the best of our ability. While painting your house, I learned this lesson and try to remember that if we do not take the time, then we will have to do it again. I am glad I was taught this lesson in my years. I will continue to remember and to use this lesson to everyone that I meet. Happy birthday, Granddad. Hi, Granddad. Happy birthday. So my favorite memory of you is when we talk about diving and how back then you used to wear a t-shirt to avoid the pain of smacking water. And I also wanted to share with you what I learned and respect most about you. So I've heard so many stories about Girl Margaret and they all share one common theme and it's the role you took on and just everyone's opinion of how great you handled each and every situation. You took on so many things. I just really respect like how you held yourself together and working in a nursing home like I hope I can make a difference at least on one person. The compassion you showed Grandma Margaret, I just have the utmost respect for. So have a great day, and happy birthday again. I love you. Well, hello, Granddad. Hi, Granddad. Hi, Hi Grandma. Well, tonight is a typical evening on Fairway Drive in Burlington, Vermont. And we just finished our dinner, and we thought we'd have some cookies for dessert. And of course, what do we need first, Amelia? Questions. Questions. So, all right. So, the first question. Who should get the first question? Me, me, me. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Is that okay with you, Mommy? Age right. before beauty. All right. So, Amelia, I know you've been working very hard in math, so I'm going to ask you a math question. Fine. Tell me what the square root of 810 is. 90? Correct! Wow. Nice job! Alright, so you get a cookie. I got an X! You got an X! Thank you! Oh, what does an X mean? I can get a cookie. Oh, very mm. nice. Okay, so Mommy, I know uh, <laughs> your favorite football game this year was when the Giants played the Patriots. There were two players on the team. One was Malcolm Brown, and one was uh, Jason Pierre-Paul. So tell me, what do they have in common? They both wear the jersey 90. Correct. You get a cookie. Yes. Beautiful. Who's next? Me. Oh, we have to ask Daddy a question. Well, actually. Uh-oh. Yeah. What happened? I think that you forgot the mayonnaise. What are you talking about? You forgot to say thank you. And what does that mean? If you got an X. I did. You can't have another cookie. Oh, <laughs> poor mommy. All right. Are, are, you, are you composed enough to ask me a question? Try. All right. How old is Granddad turning this year? 
Well, he was born in 1926. And I remember on his 45th birthday, I said to him, you know what, Dad? You're halfway there. So I think he's turning 90. That's such a sweet story. Why, thank you. May I have a cookie? Yes. You may. Why, thank you. Oh! Oh. Sure, he <gasps> remembered. I didn't get an X. And I think we should sing our special happy birthday song to Granddad. No X. Oh, no. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Mommy. Mom. We're singing a special special happy birthday song to Granddad. And all the monkeys aren't in the zoo. Mommy! Mom. Every day you meet I quite a I think few. we Mom. should let Amelia lead us in this song. So it's really all up to you. Happy birthday to you. Amelia! Like no, that's not oh, what yeah. the song is. What's the song? You want me to lead? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I no, I forgot that. Ready? Well, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. So how long the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? Happy birthday, Granddad! Happy birthday, Granddad! Hi, Granddad. Brandon and Nicole here in our beautiful hometown of Vancouver. We wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. And we're happy to share this memory with you as well as talk about some of our favorite memories. But the favorite thing about it is this fact that we have so many. Just having you involved in my life growing up and then you involved in the and Mines life since uh, we've been together. It's been a complete pleasure and there's three things that I really wanted to highlight. One is our passion for sports. As you can see it hasn't worn off. And I'm very excited about our new town, hometown in, in Boston where we can keep rooting for the, the baseball, the basketball and the hockey team together. Now Go the football, well, we won't really talk about that. The second thing to bring up that you may not have realized is that the first time that I actually was in Canada was with you. We took Nicholas, uh, we were playing Risk in the back seat and uh, we drove through Canada on our way to see Uncle Tommy and Ryan and the kids uh, without a passport or ID. Imagine that you could do that back then. And finally the last thing to talk about is uh, your impression and how uh, I feel like I inherited your work ethic uh, you know, on the ball field, between the lines, as well as in the backyard, in the garden, mowing the lawn. You know, even though I didn't do the best job all the time, uh, you always uh, gave me a cheeseburger at the end of the day, made me feel good about it, and I came back, I tried to work a little harder uh, the next time around, and I think all those uh, good habits you've instilled in me have helped me go get off to a good start of my career. So without further ado, uh, we just want to wish you a very happy birthday. We love you very much, and we're looking forward to rejoining all the Farleys back home in the Northeast and rooting for the Boston teams Woo! and the Giants. Love you. Love you. Happy birthday. Hi Granddad, happy birthday. I hope you are having a fantastic time and that somebody has provided you with your infamous martini. As I recall, your determined yet fruitless attempts to, to order one at the Magic Kingdom down in Disney World on my eighth birthday. I love you and once again, hope you are having a fantastic birthday. So happy birthday, Granddad. It's very difficult for me to share one memory with you over the years, over the past 50 years, honestly. On September 17th of 2002, I remember that we were up early in the morning on our way to the hospital because uh, Deborah was about to give birth to PJ. And uh, being my first time, we were a little nervous and we were trying to figure things out. And on our way to the hospital, I think it was about 4.20 or maybe 5.20 in the morning, that uh, we called you and Carolyn woke you up and decided to share the news that we were on our way to the hospital to have our first child. And uh, that was really cool. And you had said to me, well, you know, Pete, uh, you might be there for a while. And uh, we were, um, but it was, uh, it was, so that was, um, you know, it was pretty, new for us you know the fact that you've had 10 kids and uh, now I've had four and been blessed with four that uh, you know your experience has once again resounded with me um, and I've been able to use that 
um, you know, for the rest of my life. So happy 90th birthday. We all love you very much. And we look forward to another 10 years. Love you. Bye. Happy birthday, Granddad. We love you. One of my favorite memories about Granddad was when I was in high school and he'd come right from work and he'd take his tripod and put it on top of the car and he'd videotape our soccer games. And I was so proud of him that he did that. He totally did it for me and for our team. What you doing? Watching the game. Filming my kids doing what they do best. And it wasn't just me that I appreciated it. It was everybody on the soccer team. We thought it was really cool and everybody got together the next day. Everybody really wanted to watch it. He did it. I don't know, probably six, eight times. And I'd like to say thank you for that. And I know I said thank you back then, but I'm going to say it again. And then, of course, there's the every time you finish something, you would say, Ah, cha cha cha, cha 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 cha. <laughs> Hi, Granddad. My favorite memory was an easy one. Uh, it was when you stayed with us for a few days. Uh, usually, when we're with all the other Farleys, there's 50 or so there, and it's hard to get your individual attention. We had you all to ourselves for, I think, three days. Uh, it was very special having one-on-one -on -one conversations. It meant a lot. It was very nice spending the time with you. I really appreciated it. And happy birthday. Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. Hey, Brina, while we're here, why don't we talk about good things about Granddad? That sounds like a great idea, London. Cheers. Cheers. London. Yes. I think my favorite thing about Granddad mm -hmm. is that every time we go over their house, this goes for Grandma Carolyn too. Oh. They always make sure that we have enough drink and enough food to eat, especially ice cream. Oh, and that's that's very true. I really appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that too. My favorite Granddad memory happens to be like about four or five years ago when he took me to learn about falcons. We had an instructor there who, who let me hold the falcon on my wrist. And during that time, Granddad was trying very, very hard to get a really good picture of me and the falcon. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that was like, aw, I want to get a good quality picture yeah. of the falcon. Very nice of him. Yeah, very nice yeah, of him. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. To Granddad. To Granddad. <laughs> Happy birthday, Granddad! Well, happy birthday uh, to the best father-in-law a guy could have, D.O.D., who actually knew me as a child and still didn't object to me marrying his daughter. <laughs> so, thanks, Tom. Thanks for being who you are. And, uh, amen. Amen. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Here I'm decorating for another party. I remember when Conley and I were young, we helped you host parties. We wore matching cocktail aprons, and we passed drinks. We took drink orders and passed hors d'oeuvres, and we learned to speak nicely to adults. So I really appreciate the gift that you gave us. So I just want to say that I've inherited a lot of your wonderful qualities, including your love of books, your love of good movies, um, your love of having fun, and your appreciation of your Irish heritage. I also inherited your peaceful demeanor and your fabulous good looks. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Tom. Hi, Granddad. Happy birthday. We love you very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We love you. Bye. Hi, Granddad. We want to wish you a happy birthday, and we love you, and we thank you for always getting all of us together so that we can all spend so much time together. Happy birthday, Granddad. I love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Dear Granddad, happy birthday. In honor of your birthday, um, we're toasting here. So I know you have a lot of messages, Granddad. I thought I would start very quickly with memories that are immediately available to me as I look back on my life and what you taught me. I look back on Brown Street, and then when I was in first grade, I remember you going to Mrs. Perlmutter's house to fix her plumbing. But I remember the way that you took on that job, the plumbing job, engaged Mrs. Perlmutter and helped her. And I always remembered that as a case of excellence 
and how to treat someone and how to do a good job, even if someone didn't know what was happening in their basement with their hot water pipes. We moved to Greenfield, and I remember you helping me learn how to swim and holding me up and putting me on my stomach and on my back. And I remember the pleasure that I had in floating in the water, being safe and secure in my father's arms. And I've always remembered that. We moved to Wendell Avenue, and I remember the dinner conversation, the fact that we could bring up ideas and debate and have topics of the day. And I've always enjoyed that, and I've carried that on in my life. And that's affected me to this very day. I will be starting a new life with someone who is very engaging and very diverse in their points of view. And it all began at the dinner table with you. I remember you reviewing homework. Believe it or not, I sought your input on writing my papers. I would write rough drafts and you would mark them in red pen. I was actually impressed that I got good feedback from you and it was always a pleasant surprise to get that good feedback and to take it and to apply it and to make my work better because of your feedback. And since then I have always solicited feedback for my work, although it, my work may be a little different than others. So when I think about the things I've learned from you, I think about lead by example. I think of always a better way. And I think of work for the greater good. And I think of discretion is the better part of valor. And so three out of four is not bad. Thank you, Granddad, for all of the help and example that you've given to me in your life. The times have been very tough sometimes for both of us. Life has thrown us curveballs, and you've set the example for how a man handles those tough situations, and I've tried to follow your example. I know you've lived your life knowing that others are following behind, and I've tried to do the same. Happy birthday, Granddad. I love you. Some of my favorite memories with Granddad center around trivia. As we all know, growing up in the Farley household, every now and then, Granddad would take out the bag of cookies and he would play a game with his children where he would ask them little questions about history or geography or, or anything else he wanted to ask. And the reward would be an extra cookie or an extra piece of dessert. It was always something that you know, was fondly recalled later on. And so growing up in Pittsfield, my brothers and I were lucky enough to play the same game with Granddad. But more than that, he would send us birthday cards with trivia questions in them, or whenever we'd be over for dinner, he might ask us questions over the dinner table. Even just spending time with him, there was always, he always liked to make games of things and to encourage us to learn, to be competitive and, and be curious. And so I think that's one of the, the things I really value from, from the time I've spent with him, is he would always push us to learn more, to, to be accurate, to be detailed. He, he wouldn't accept something that was a partial answer. It had to be 100% right, and it had to be the best you could give. And so I, I really appreciate those, those lessons, and those are fond memories I have with Granddad. Happy birthday, Granddad. Hi, Granddad. Happy 90th birthday. My favorite memories of you are when my family and I went down to Orlando and visited you and Grandma Carolyn. We had a lot of fun playing tennis um, and spending time with you guys at your house down there. And my second favorite memory was when I was a kid. My family used to live in Pittsfield and we'd go to your house for dinner. And after dinner, we would play the Thin Mint game for dessert. I wanted to let you know that I love you very much and that I'm excited to see you over 4th of July. Bye. Hi, Granddad. Happy birthday. I'd have to say my favorite memory was back when we would have dinner at your house back when I was probably in kindergarten, first grade, and you'd ask us questions, and if we got the answer right, then we'd get dessert, um, some of those Milano cookies. And one time you asked me what color barbershop poles were, and I said that they were red, white, and blue, and you said that they were only red and white. And it's still contested to this day, but I continue to do research, and I'm pretty sure that red, white, and blue is an acceptable answer, but I, I love that you always used to do that with us. That, that was probably my favorite memory. Hey, Granddad. Happy birthday. I would have to say one of my favorite memories of us is working in your garden, because I really always love to do that, and I remember you'd always call me a little bit, so that was always a good time hanging out with you. Hope your birthday is really great. I love you a lot. Okay. 
you know, when I think back to Dad and well, what he's done for me, I always think of playing soccer in the backyard and doing different things. Dad would roll garbage cans, and we'd have to hit the garbage cans as they would roll in, and then we'd have to put them inside the garbage cans on different passes, lining up and playing pepper, and Dad would kick the ball at us with his steel-toed shoes. That was a lot of fun. And then we'd have to trap him and bring him down. I also remember him coming out to Michigan and watching a game with us at Aquinas. But probably my fondest memory of Dad is somewhere between uh, the questions that he would ask after dinner and put the X on the bottom of the cookie, or his great singing. Of course, the famous song of Be Kind to a Web-Footed Friend. And uh, I'll ask the Dad to finish that song for you. Happy birthday, Dad. First off, I want to say happy birthday to Granddad. You're just an amazing guy, keeping a family together and all the children being so close in all these years. Second of all, um, one of my memories of you was when Jack was a freshman and he had the Super Bowl and it was freezing cold. I remember Carolyn staying at our house, and you insisted on coming to the game with us to watch Jack play. And you had a jacket on, and you're like, oh, I'm fine. And then, you know, you put another jacket on, and you said, oh, yeah, I have two jackets on. So we put blankets on you, and I kept asking you, are you okay? Because we can leave any time. And you're like, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. So I just thought that was great that you would, you know, sit in the cold to watch one of your uh, grandchildren play, and all the different events that you go to. I think that's just amazing, and I want to wish you a happy birthday. My favorite memory of Granddad was, I think I, think I was about 10, and Brandon had just gotten into West Point, so Uncle Sean had a bunch of literature on West Point, and me being my curious self started perusing the literature, and Granddad quickly noticed this, and uh, because he could not leave the educator role behind him, proceeded to ask me several questions at lunch, and I think I did my best to maybe stump him on a few, but I always appreciated talking to Granddad about like random history things, and it was always cool whenever I got my birthday phone call or saw him at an event, you know, we would always share reading lists and just get to talk, whether it's about the Revolutionary War or reading about um, the 20th century president. Granda was always well-read and always willing to talk through somebody to enhance their learning. So I really appreciated that and my time with Granddad. Happy birthday. I was always grateful for Granddad making the effort once a year to come watch me play football. So thank you, Granddad, and happy birthday. I remember Granddad trying to come out to see my freshman state championship football game when watch us win. My best memory of Granddad was when he came to my last soccer game of the season. Hi Granddad, from New York City we wanted to wish you happy birthday and share some of our favorite stories about you. Something you taught me was when you and Grandma Carolyn came to watch me and I asked you to turn on the shower and you both laughed at me. So that day I learned how to turn on the shower myself. One of my favorite memories of Granddad is when him and Grandma Carolyn used to stop by and visit us in New Jersey on, his, on their way to Florida, and Granddad let me do his hair. Hi, Granddad. My favorite memory of you is many times when you come to our house, maybe on your way to Florida, you're downstairs in the kitchen very early in the morning trying to keep everybody still sleeping. Unfortunately, the cabinets are clanking, the coffee makers making all kinds of noise, and needless to say, none of us are still. <laughs> hey, Granddad, way, way too many memories to share on this is short clip. But now that it's your 90th birthday, I can hardly wait to get you in that spanking machine. Happy 90th birthday, Granddad! Hi, Granddad. Nick and Jen here. Not that you couldn't tell already, we just wanted to put that out there in case you've had an extra birthday martini or two and you couldn't tell who it was on the screen. Just wanted to take a quick moment to wish you a very happy, very special birthday. Hope you're having a great day. We love you dearly. And, you know, we, we're looking forward to catching up with you and celebrating many more birthdays. Happy birthday. We love you. Okay, Granddad, if you get this question right, you get a dessert. Why do we always put our finger on our nose? All the time when I was little and we were with Granddad, we had our finger glued to our nose. And I was thinking about it and I have no idea why. So many wonderful times at East Street, I remember Easter egg hunts in the backyard and Christmas plays, riding on the back of someone, probably a shepherd, into Granddad's and Grandma's living room. February breaks in Florida. So many wonderful times. It was such, such a wonderful part of my childhood. And now that I'm grown up and I don't have to have my finger glued to my nose anymore, we're still able to share so many special moments together over puzzles and happy hour and just really, really wonderful conversation. So thankful to have you as my grandfather and I love you so much.
Happy birthday, Granddad. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. It's certainly a momentous year. You're turning 90. I'm turning 60. Courtney's turning 30. Certainly big years and decades for the Farley Loring family. We're all celebrating together this year. And that over the years, I've called you Tom, I've called you Granddad, I've called you Dad. And as of late, Dad seems to be the best thing to call you because You've always made me feel as part of the family, not an outsider to the family. You've always treated me like one of your children, that I feel very much like one of your children. And that's a special gift in you that made that happen, and I love you for it. And here we are today at your birthday party um, with all of your children and so many of your grandchildren here to celebrate what a beautiful, wonderful family that you've created and what a great legacy that we will all have. Thank you, Thank and you. we love you, and, and happy, happy birthday. birthday. Well, Dr. Farley, I can't believe that we're looking to your 90th birthday in uh, a few weeks from now. And it reminds me so much, so often, that at Hibbert School, when we were dismissing one beautiful spring day, I was at the bus stop and different members of the faculty were saying, well, happy birthday, Dr. Farley. So when it came my turn, I followed suit and I said, well, Dr. Farley, I understand it's your birthday. And uh, I certainly hope it's uh, a happy birthday. Well, Dr. Farley said, my son, Sean, wished me a happy birthday this morning. And he said, well, Dad, you're halfway to 90. And I can't believe that here we are 45 years later. However, that was when I first realized that your birthday was May 6th and mine was to follow on May 8th, which would have made me 41 the year that you were 45. However, I had probably been at Hibbert either my second or third year. But here we are at your 90th and going strong. Uh, so happy birthday, and I love you. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Unforgettable. Though near or far Like a song of love That clings to me How the thought of you does things to me Never Oh.